If you're using testosterone, estrogen, or any other compounded hormone, stay tuned. Welcome back guys, TRT Veteran here. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Now think back to a few months or years before you started hormone replacement therapy. Think how you felt back whenever your testosterone, your estrogen, or your progesterone were all whacked out. I mentioned estrogen and progesterone because we do have ladies watching and this will affect them as well as men. So now we have to worry about the FDA, even more so because the FDA is attacking compounding pharmacies. They're trying to stop the production of compounded hormones. The FDA funded a study by the National Academics of Science, Engineering, and Medicine in 2018. The results came out in July of 2020. The report found no clinical usefulness of compounded hormone formulations. It also recommends that many forms of estradiol, pregnenolone, progesterone, testosterone cypionate, and testosterone propionate, plus all pellet hormones can be considered candidates for the FDA difficult to compound list. Once something is on that list, pharmacies are no longer allowed to make any of those medications. Essentially breaking that down, they want across the board restrictions on all compounded hormones. The report seems to ignore the fact that millions of people have an actual quality of life while taking these compounded hormones. According to a review of the report, the FDA had biased info. They interfered with that info and manipulated it. It seems apparent to many that this report came out so they can start restrictions on these compounded hormones. Many people are worried that they'll put restrictions on hormones for men, women, and transgendered patients. Why are they wanting to shut down access to these prescriptions that have been available for 50 years? The FDA wants everybody on an FDA manufactured medication. The issue with that is there's not as many options. There are so many people out there who need specific dosages due to allergies or other reasons and the FDA doesn't offer those options. However, compounding pharmacies do. Without compounding, there's less access to these medications, so you're gonna have to pay more to get the brand name medications. Now, some people may be fine with that, as you might already be getting a brand name hormone from your pharmacy. However, there's many, many others that rely on these compounding pharmacies. Compounding pharmacies have so many rules and regulations to follow, so they should be just as safe and regulated as the FDA. For me, I went through a normal pharmacy and received my testosterone in cottonseed oil. However, I had horrible reactions. I started getting red, itchy lumps under my skin. It was super painful and irritated. I then began receiving my medication from a compounded pharmacy in which I switched to grapeseed oil. There, my side effects were a little less painful and a little less severe. However, ultimately, I stuck with that compounding pharmacy and got my testosterone in the MCT oil, which resolved all of those issues. If the FDA has its way, I would not have the quality of life that I do now, and I'd have to go back to that cottonseed oil that causes those red itchy lumps and is severely painful. Women, you're not in the clear either. If this happens, women are gonna have severe issues getting their hormones as well from these compounding pharmacies. Just as men's testosterone can be compounded, women's hormones like estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone are all compounded as well. If this goes in effect, it could even affect my wife as she uses a compounding pharmacy for her testosterone because most women's testosterone is compounded at a much lower dose. Many people are on hormones to help with various issues, such as anxiety, depression, fertility issues, sex drive, exhaustion, brain fog, weight gain, and that's just to name a few. If it's hard to get those prescriptions, that's gonna significantly reduce the quality of life for thousands and thousands of people. There are two US representatives sending a letter to the rest of the house. They want the FDA to create policies that keep the access to current treatment options with compounded hormones. Now you can also help with this fight. If you go to compounding.com 
or hormoneaccesscoalition.org. You can write your testimonial story about the compounded hormone that you use, and you can share it with your members of Congress. Tell them to focus not only on the science, but also patient experiences and not the flawed report. To sum this all up, essentially nothing has happened yet, but it could be coming very quickly. Don't just worry about it, but do something about it. Raise awareness by giving your testimony and getting those letters to your congressmen and women. My wife and I have already filled this out on the websites, and so you guys should too. And if you've already done this, you can go ahead and comment down below and let us know. Make sure you stay tuned because in an upcoming video, we are going to be meeting with somebody who is very well known in the TRT world, who is a founder of a couple of different companies and is going to shed more light on this topic as well as some others. We'll be interviewing the one and only Nelson Virgil. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can keep track and you'll be notified whenever we post that video. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and head over to Facebook, check out my TRT veteran group and follow me on Instagram at TRT Veteran. We'll see you guys around in the next video.